Hello, my name is Elizabeth. In this lesson, I'm going to give you an overview of IBM SPSS statistics. We are looking at SPSS with a file open. I'm going to introduce you to the front end of the software very quickly. Now on the very top, you can see the file name next to the F uh, SPSS icon. Below that, we have the usual menu system for any Windows program. So it will start usually from file, edit all the way down to help. Now these menus are all pulled down so you can click on say file and it will give you all the other things you can do under file. Um, we have the ribbon. The ribbon gives you icons of most frequently used functions. You will get familiar with them like any programs what they are for. You have the usual ones that look alike like open, save, print. Now underneath the, the icon bar is a table of data. Now this table tends to look like Excel and that's how SPSS is. The only difference that we have looking at this table view but before even I go on to draw the differences I want to draw your eye to two um, sheets data view sheet and variable view sheet. They are slightly different. I want to focus on the data view first. Now in the data view that we are looking at we can see that we have columns and these columns are a bit different from Excel columns. In Excel the columns will have a name such as A, B, C, D. That's how the program is written. But here in SPSS, you don't have the ABC. You get to name the column by the name of the data that you are collecting. The first column here, the researcher has reserved it to um, for the respondent ID. But the following one we can see is the treatment group that that respondent belongs to and the ethnicity, the age, and on and on. Beyond the column, we also look at the row, which is very similar to Excel. We have the rows that contains the complete responses for each respondent. So in this case, if we scroll down, we will find that we have a hundred respondents in this data file. So now we're going to look at the variable view. So I'll click on the variable view. You can see that the variable view is a little different from the data view. Here we have columns named differently. We have and the first column contains the names of each of the variables or the names of each of the questions that you are gathering information about. The first name is the ID. The second name is the group. Now you can give them names but what the software require of you is that you should not give a name to the same name to more than one variable. So you can actually call these instead of group ethnicity, you can call them question number one, question number two, question number three in whichever order that you want to call them for convenience. Also you are not allowed to use spaces in the naming. You can go for as many characters as you, you want but it has to be one chunk of characters but not with breaks between them. So you are not allowed to do that. The second important column is the type of data that you are bringing in. Remember SPSS is the statistical software so it prefers the data to be numeric. Of course you can always bring in 
variety of data type, but it has to be numeric. So you need to decide if you have the data in the string, you need to organize it to bring it in as numeric. The next important column is the label. Now here in the label, you are given the opportunity to name questionnaire sheets and the name of the questions, you can cut and paste them here as labels. The software use the label to then generate the summary tables for you. So it's important that you give it a simplified version of sometimes your question if the question is very long, the name of it is very long. Now I'll move you to the next column, which is the values. Here you declare only those questions that have choices to offer the respondent. So the question number one, which is in this case, the treatment of the individual, the treatment group of the individual respondent. Here we have two choices. We have the control group and we have the treatment group. So you can randomize the respondent to whichever group. I want you to also look at the way that the researcher chose to organize the choices. Here the researcher started counting from zero and one. You don't have to, you could start counting yours from one as the control group and two as a treatment group. Likewise, we can look at the ethnicity is also a categorical variable. Here you can see that the researcher chose to count from one instead of zero as previously. Now there are some variables that doesn't need any values because they are what we call continuous variable or a continuous scale measure. So in this case, you leave them alone. Example of search is age, length of hospital stay. This data tends to be computed from one point of a continuum to another point of a continuum, the distance between the two points. So it's not a tick boxes choice that you can make it available. People have to give you the raw data. Now the remainder of the question, you can see that they were all choices. Yes, no, yes, no, and other choices. The next important column is the measurement of the data. Now the measurement of data comes only in two shapes. We have continuous scale measurement data and we have categorical measurement. So as we have already, um, the next important column is the measure, the measurement column. Now data is measured in one of two ways, a continuum skill and a categorical measurement. Now, as we kind of refer before to the values, which is the choices that are available to the categories, the categorical variable comes in two shapes. We have the nominal categorical and we have the ordinal categorical. So let me explain. The nominal categorical is where you have two, three, four, five choices and they are not in any special order or position. So the user can just choose any one that applies. For instance, gender is a nominal. So we don't have a ranking between the males and the female, you just choose. Whilst if we were to look at an ordinal data type, which is a categorical ordinal, it would be the arrangement of the choices tends to have a natural order. 
that comes with it. So for instance, we can say somebody is in year one or year two or year three. Each year is a category, but there is an order that run through the year one, the year two and the year three. So that is the difference between the ordinal and categorical. Also with a continuum scale, continuum scale do not have choices as such. They are all in a continuum. For example, open questions or data that we have to compute the values from two given points, such as age. We can compute somebody's age from their date of birth and today's date. And therefore, it's a continuum. If we want that raw data before we manipulate it, we tend to just give it as an open question for the individual to give us their own age and then we can play with it later on. So that is continuum skill. SPSS call is skill. So these are the two things. So this is the differences that we need to bear in mind with the so what I'm trying to say here is the type of summary statistics you can generate on your variables very much depends on the measure, either continuous measure or a categorical measure. I'm going to demonstrate this by generating a quick frequency count on categorical measures. So, I will go into the Analyze menu and then I'll go for the Descriptive Statistics and Frequencies. Now here we get to see two small boxes within the Frequency dialog box. On the left box, we can see all the variables or so all the questions in our data set and you can see the icon that also allow us to remember very quickly which variables are categorical and which variables are continuous. Frequencies are designed to count the number of choices in questions. So obviously we can only count the number of people who are in each category or subcategory within the categorical variables. So here I can take along to the empty box waiting to do the frequency group and also ethnicity. I can literally take everything that is categorical across, but I want to restrict myself to these two variables. Here we can get a frequency table generated for us and also a chart in addition to the frequency table. Now the charts here, we have bar chart, pie chart, and histogram. We are only allowed bar chart and pie chart for categorical variables. Histogram is reserved for continuous variables. So what I'm going to do is to just pick up a bar chart. Let's keep to the frequencies instead of doing the percentage. So I'll go for continuum and make sure that the tick box for the frequency table is not removed. So you can now go for OK. And SPSS will then produce the output that we've requested on a new window called the outputs window. So I will scroll down to see what happened to the table in the graph. The first variable that I made a request for, for frequency, which is counting how many were in each subgroup, we can see the treatment group out of the 100 records, 46 of them were in the control group and 54 were in the treatment group. Of course, the proportional percentage is going to be the same number. That's very simple. With the ethnicity, we can see that 83 out of 100 were white and 17 were non-white and that gives you um, proportions accordingly. 
and we can also take a look at the graph for each one of the tables the treatment group graph and also the ethnicity graph so what we have done so far is we have seen very quickly how SPSS actually allow us to work with the data that we've got in both generating summary statistics and also graphs.